Good evening. My name is Paula Penchenko, and we are all thrilled to see you here tonight. Tandem Press and the Jazz Studies Program at the Mead Witter School of Music at the University of Wisconsin-Madison are pleased to present the eighth year of the Tandem Press Friday Jazz Series. And we're delighted to welcome you who are here and our audience and those of you who are listening to us live tonight. The series is made possible with the incredible support of the John and Carolyn Peterson Family Foundation and live streaming is brought to you by Audio for the Arts and Metrotone. This program could not have happened without Johannes Wallman, the John and Carolyn Peterson Chair in Jazz Studies, and his colleagues, Peter Dominguez, Arun Luthra, Chad McCullough, Nick Moran, and Les Flimig. I also want to thank the incredible music students who will be playing for you this evening. The program tonight will feature the Jazz Composers Group directed by Les Thimick. During the intermission, we hope that you will view our latest exhibition entitled Rigmarole by the UW-Madison Department of Art alumnus Derek Hibbs. Please also feel free to, throw flu to stroll through our studio and see the prints in progress. Tandem is open daily by appointment and on weekends, but tomorrow we will have our annual open house with print demonstrations at 11, 12.30, and 2 p.m. And now I will turn this over to Les Thimig and our fantastic School of Music Jazz Studies students. Right on it. Four beats.
Thank you very much. And as uh, Paula told us, oh yeah, that too, okay. Uh, we are the UW Jazz Composers Group, and we are so named because all the music we play year in and year out was in one way or another written by a member of our UW Jazz community. Um, and that first tune was a one of mine, we uh, funky blues that we call Freebooter. And so we're gonna continue now with composition by our trumpet section, Mr. Noah Jacques. <laughs> See that? He hasn't played a note yet, and he already gets the applause. Not bad. Not bad. Eh? It's the perks in life that matter, right? Okay, yeah. And this is a very delightful tune of his, written in the, uh, on the kind of the rhythmic base of that wonderful dance form from southern Brazil called the Samba. And he calls this one Sonia de Primavera, which in English is Spring Dream.
All right, thank you once again. Um, once again, a hand for the writer, Noah. Yeah. And our other wonderful solos, who we will all be meeting, meeting in the uh, course of the evening, afternoon, e not evening until 6 o'clock, okay, afternoon. Um, and uh, continuing down our list of uh, UW composers, our, our pianist, Mr. Mark Gooden, is the composer of this next one. Kind of a very light, bouncy little waltz that uh, we like very much. Uh, and he titles this one, Molasses Rapids. Thank you. 
again, Mark Gooden, our pianist. Speaking of Mark Gooden, our pianist, we're going to play another tune he wrote. Right? We'll make it a mini Mark Festival. Uh, this is one uh, we introduced way back, what was it, November 1st, I believe, was our, our first concert of the year. Um, we just had our second, and we, we do two at school each semester. So just this past Wednesday, we had our, uh, our second show. So, so we played Wednesday night five tunes and uh, we added uh, and then we uh, come over here today and to play both sets we added the five from our first concert for a total of ten if you're slow tonight and, uh, and that makes for two sets and that's fun and uh, that was uh, but in between at one o'clock this afternoon we played five charts for the class we have at UW called music and performance which is a lot of fun we do so we're like a road band tonight you know we just play it's great it's really great we don't get to be on the road like the old days where the band rode buses and uh, you played at least six nights out of seven. And, uh, you know, not nowadays people talk about tours. You know, the, the Rolling Stones have a tour and Michael Jackson had the Victory Tour. And there was no, the word tour was never used. It was just called on the road. And individual players came on the band and left the band as individuals. The band was out 12 months a year, maybe a week off at Christmas, you know. That, and so we're getting a little taste of that this week, and it's a lot of fun. So this next tune that we introduced, as I said, back on November 1st, is from Mark, if I get my pages straight here before we play. And he titled this one Blues Cues, and you can hear the blues in here.
All right, thank you once again. Uh, and with your permission, we will not play one more chart by Mark. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just let him play the piano now. We'll give, give him a little break, right? All, all of his uh, fame and attention might be too much for him. I'm not sure, right? Um, so we have one more to play before we take a little break. Uh, and this is one that uh, we also played back in November. It comes from me, and uh, yet I wrote it, um, boy, several years ago. I don't, I'd have to ask my son about this exactly when, because it's, it's a goofy story. Uh, my son and his wife were uh, moving to Denver, right? And so the old man was, uh, had the hit put on him to drive the small truck while they drove the big truck, right? And so we're driving away, and uh, uh, have any of you driven across Nebraska? No. I mean, you know, the dark side of the moon. I mean, really. I mean, it's just. And so I'm sitting there in the truck all by myself, and I said, I said okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a jazz tune in my head, and even if we stop, I'm not going to write it down. I've got to keep it in my head, and I can't go on to the next part until I've got this one firmly jammed in my head. A little little game I played, right? And um, so we did that, and did and came up with the tune. It seemed to be okay. And then I, I did it back in my head again, you know. And Colorado's coming up soon, so that's okay. So, and I changed this note, then I changed that note, then I thought this rhythm was square, so I, put, I just kept tweaking it, but you know, nothing visual whatsoever, all in my head. And um, so we finally stopped for the night at the motel, and you know, and all of a sudden just. For no good reason, uh, the phrase, you hop, I skip, we all jump, popped into my head. I don't know what that, to this day, I don't know what that means, right? <laughs> you hop, I skip, we all jump. You know, hop, skip, and jump. Okay. But I couldn't, I couldn't shake it from my head. And it was indelibly married to this tune I composed. So, well, so anyway, we pull into Boulder the next day. Only to find out, I hadn't been to Boulder since someplace in the mid 70s. You know, y'all been to Boulder? It's a lot like Madison. You'd, you'd kind of recognize it. Um, and uh, we're looking around and everything, and it turns out Boulder, just a little bit smaller than Madison, uh, they have a, a city lines bus system, and it's got three separate routes. You know what they're called? The hop, the skip, and the jump. <laughs> and I said, okay, this one was dropped in my pocket from up on high, so I have to use it. That's it. So we'll close this first set with the tune I wrote all the way across the desolation of Nebraska. Named, I'll say it for the fourth time, you hop, I skip, we all jump, and a few of us will play some solos on this.
Thank you very much. Okay, and I see as Paula comes to her microphone, I will give up my microphone. Well, that was a stunning performance, and thank you to all the musicians and to Les Thimig for directing the composer's group. It was uh, an amazing uh, first half. Um, we're going to break for 10 minutes, and um, 10 to 12 minutes, and then we will come back, and you're all very welcome to stroll through the studio and see what's on. So we have a lot of uh, different prints that are being made and have been made, and if you have any questions, our staff will be downstairs to answer any questions. But again, let me thank the students, give them a round of applause. <laughs> We'll see you back in about 10 minutes. Thank you. I'm Buzz Kemper from Audio for the Arts Recording Studios, and we have the pleasure of doing the technical end of these uh, Tandem Press concerts, along, of course, with Dave Alcorn from Microtone Media. And I'm here with the director of Tandem Press, Paula Panchenko. Paula, great to be with you again. Thank you very much. And this, these are so fun, these <laughs> concerts, uh, just absolutely terrific uh, music uh, from these students. And... Uh, a great way for people to realize what this program is is all about at the UW. Uh, the, the jazz program is just so terrific uh, with people like Johannes Wallman there, who I know has been absolutely instrumental in working with you in getting this series going. Absolutely. And also, of course, Les Thimig, who is the director of this group. And uh, and this is the, uh, the jazz composers group. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And this is the third concert of the season, um, the fall season, and then next season we'll have three more. Excellent. And does this mean that, uh, and I'm not sure you know, how much you know about the group itself, but does Jazz Composers Group, does that mean that the the com the players are actually the composers, so they're playing pieces that they themselves have written? I think it works in both ways. Okay. I think they play individual pieces that because they do give explanations about those pieces, which is very um, informational for people to know what's coming up. And then many of the students also do their own compositions, which they've done in the past. Okay. And again, just remind us, how did Tandem Press start this series and what was what was the motivation for starting a jazz series um, from an organization which is normally dedicated to artistic prints? Well, of course, there's a great relationship between art and jazz. A lot of artists in particular have been, you know, very involved in in jazz and, you know, they've been inspired by jazz in their paintings. So there's that long history. And I think we wanted to attract a more diverse audience um, than just people who perhaps only come to Tandem to look at prints. But by doing that and linking up another artistic event, such as the jazz concerts, it really broadens the audience. And the audience then brings back a lot of people, their friends who are interested in art as mm. well. So it's a great collaboration. And Johannes is amazing. Mm. Um, as we all know, he's um, very inspirational and a huge asset to Madison. And Susan Dunn, who's the director of the School of Music, the Mead Witter School of Music, I should say, when I first proposed the idea to her, she said, oh, stop. One person to talk to, mm -hmm. Johannes Wallman. Yes, yes. So um, and both programs, uh, both both his um, chair in jazz studies was funded by the John and Carolyn Peterson Foundation. Right. And they the family now fund these concerts. So that is also um, a, a great thing that's happening. Yeah, that is really terrific. Well, that's, yeah, it's great. I mean, art is art. And uh, so it's great that Tandem Press is involved with both the performing arts and uh, and visual arts. And so we're going to get back to the <laughs> Jazz Composers Ensemble with Les Thimig in a few moments. But speaking of print art, you just got back from Miami and uh, and uh, you are probably somewhat exhausted at this point. What <laughs> What were you up to out there? Well, in Miami, at the beginning of December, a major art 
uh, fair, Art Basel, comes to Miami. And um, it hasn't been on, of course, for um, a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. So um, everything opened up again this time, uh, which was very exciting. And um, all the fairs. So there was Art Miami, Art Basel Miami, and our fair is called Ink Miami. Then there are a whole lot of other fairs like Untitled and so on and so forth. There's probably about 20 different fairs happening all over Miami Beach and Miami. Wow. And it is crazy. Um, but the wonderful thing was that all the fairs, including our fair, put into effect mandates. You had to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You had to um, be vaccinated and show proof of vaccination to come to the fairs. Okay. And everyone adhered to it. Great. So we had a very safe time. And the other thing is that everyone was just so happy to be back mm -hmm. looking at art rather than watching it on um, YouTube or video or whatever, mm -hmm. virtually. Yes. Um, it, so it was very pleasant. And the only thing that was removed from all the fairs were, was the opportunity to eat and drink. You had to go somewhere else to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that's a, that's a minor uh, a minor little problem. But yes, I agree. It's so nice that uh, people are able to gather again. We're figuring out, you know, how to do it safely, and uh, and that uh, that is terrific. So, yes. well, congratulations on a great show out oh, there. Oh yeah, we had a great show. We had hundreds of people come by. I think we had five hundred people on last mm. Friday. And um, we had even more on Saturday and the fair actually opened on Wednesday. So we had we were working from 10 in the morning till eight every night. Mm -hmm. And we had um, we had a lot of very fun artists on view. We showed Jeffrey Gibson, who's an, uh, a Native American artist. We showed um, David Lynch, the movie director, who's done a lot of prints with us, and we had all mm. new prints by him. We had Micheline Thomas. We showed an Irish artist, Mazer. We showed our old favorites, so Suzanne Caporal and mm. Judy Pfaff. And so it was just very exciting, and it was very exciting to show our new work. Okay, well, thanks to you and your colleagues, I actually know most of those names, <laughs> and I've, I've seen their work, so yeah. uh, that, that is really terrific. Well, yes, well, we traveled with Sona and Mishka and Jason, so there were four okay. of us uh, promoting the okay. whole thing. Excellent. Well, now the, we're going to get back to the concert in a moment, but uh, there is a reason uh, why people should consider coming back to Tandem Press uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so tell me what uh, what you have going on tomorrow. Well, we always do an annual ho open house, but we haven't done that either. Mm -hmm. So this will be our first annual open house in about a year and a half. So we're very excited about that. It opens at <coughs> 10 o'clock on Saturday, tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. and there are going to be three demonstrations. That's the best thing. Okay. People can look at art in our gallery. We have a wonderful exhibition by Derek Hibbs, who is a graduate student who worked at Tandem Press, and he has a very fun exhibition that's up. Then at 11 o'clock, there will be a puzzle block, wood block demonstration by our printer, Joe Fry. Then at 12.30, there will be a silk screen demonstration by um, Patrick Smichek, um, who is our newest printer. And then at two o'clock, Jason Rule, who is our studio manager and our uh, uh, and, and uh, collaborative printmaker, he will do a, a, a um, demonstration on etching. So people can can mm. come and go if they want to, or they can stay all day and see the demonstrations. And the whole uh, event would close around four o'clock. And then people in Madison will have the opportunity to see our newest work, which uh, we've just shown in Miami. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of new prints to see. And then people will have an understanding of the techniques, having seen the demonstrations. Terrific. And so the people are prepared. What are the safety protocols to attend this uh, if they want to attend in person? Uh, you just have to wear a mask okay. the entire time. All right. Terrific. All right. 
Paula, thank you so much, not only for this conversation, but for everything that Tandem Press does. And um, and thank you to Johannes Wallman, who I'm sure is watching somewhere, and, uh, and to Les Thimig, and to all the students who are involved with the Tandem Press Jazz Series. And now, let's get back to the music, the Jazz Composers Ensemble, under the direction of Les Thimig. Welcome back, everybody, to the second half of this fantastic concert tonight. I want to thank you for all coming out on a very rainy, wet Irish night. And uh, the good thing, though, is it's going to be 60 degrees next week, so you'll all be very happy again. Um, I want to, again, thank the incredible students um, from the Mead Witter School of Music. I want to thank the Jazz Studies Program, and I want to especially thank Les Thimmick for directing this particular group tonight. <laughs> Tomorrow, as I said, we have a holiday open house. It begins at 10 o'clock in the morning, but the three demonstrations are at 11, 12.30, and 2 p.m., and we will close at 4. But now it is a night of music, a hop and a skip and a jump. <laughs> so I just want to say, enjoy the rest of the second half and, and thank you all so much for coming. Thank you to Audio for the Arts, Metronome, and all the people who are involved in this. And over to the fantastic stu students and Les. Thank you. 
right, thank you very much. Back for our second set. We open with a composition by our bassist, Mr. Uh, Charlie Palm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> very nice thing. It's always great that people say, oh, it must be a lot of work to write. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work to write, you know? Might be, seem easier just to put your horn together and play a few songs and go home. But when you're writing, that's many, many hours. And But there's a couple of perks. Uh, and one of them is you get to write neat parts for yourself to play, right? Did you notice who started off playing that tune? It was Charlie, you know, the bass solo at the beginning, right? The first note you heard, the fun of writing. Right? And I'll I, I said before that uh, we, we played earlier this afternoon, so we're really on a tear here, and we'll probably be just a little bit weary when we're done, but uh, you notice Charlie is wearing his white dress shirt and his black pants, you know, that's the tip-off. He's going to yet another performance tonight, right? Except he's going to leave the bass behind. It's a, he actually probably even spends more time than on the bass. He plays the trumpet as well very beautifully. Have you been over here at Tandem this year so far? Oh, yeah, okay. So you, you repeat offenders. Maybe you, uh, you uh, r recognize him holding his trumpet in, in a past performance. So a multi-threat person and very handy guy to have around, that's for sure. So we'll continue now with another piece of music from Nora Joke, our trumpet player. This is one we did again last November. Uh, and he brought the thing, and I looked at the title, and I said, what's this and who's that? And he said, oh, it's, it's music from a TV show. I said, what show? He said, well, it's a Japanese TV show. Okay, see, I'm, I'm really not much of a TV watcher myself, so everything's new to me. He said, no, 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 it's, a, it's the music from this really neat uh, TV show, right? And it turned out he's absolutely right, and he uh, did a very neat treatment of it. it. It isn't just the way it was on television. He took it and personalized it in a few ways, changed the meter around a little bit. We start out in three beats in a bar, and all of a sudden we're doing five beats in a bar, and we have to pay attention. And uh, that's really nice. So uh, in keeping with the show, he titles this one Gurin's Theme. All right? Maybe we'll all meet Gurin one day, but here it is.
All right, thank you once again. And once again, a little bit more for the writer, for Noah. Yeah. Okay. I was all set to introduce everybody the first set. And we're sitting here kind of cool on the break. I said, oh, fool, you didn't do it. Huh? So I'm a good band leader. I spaced out everything. Okay, so let's do that right now. Every member of the group uh, from in our front row here, from your right side, our trombonist, Mr. Greg Shear. And it doesn't hurt to mention his name yet one more time, Noah Jacques. <laughs> and joining us tonight, joining all this week is a, an extra treat for us because we worked all throughout the semester uh, as a six-piece band, right? And um, we had, I guess this is alumni week or something like that because uh, someone joined us for these last round of concerts and we're very, very happy he did. Our alto saxophonist who was actually a member of this group about three years ago when he was a freshman in this group and he came back to join us as our alumni guest, uh, our alto saxophonist, mi saxophonist Mr. Ben Stoffelmurray. Right. Yeah. Okay. And in the back row, the, in the back row, uh, this, uh, oh, the, the back row is over here this time. Right? Uh, our bassist once again, Charlie. Yeah. And Mark, the writing pianist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our drummer, Mr. Nathan Haywood. Right. <laughs> All right, there, I did it this time. I feel good, okay. Um, so we're gonna continue now with the piece of music I did, I think way back in the first, back in the 1970s. Is it possible I'm that old? Okay. I guess it is. Um, and uh, it's kind of a swinging tune. We call it Open Sky.
All right, moving right along. We have a tune here that's uh, kind of a similar slingy thing, a little slower, a little more down in the pocket driving, right? At, uh, it resuscitates an old slang term from the 50s I, I kind of grew up on. When it was time to leave a place, you'd say, let's ankle it. Right? And so we had some fun with that. And originally, it was that's the, maybe like, let's ankle it for the title. But we played it with another group some years back. And after a while, you, you kind of shorten these titles and just make those. I said, OK, ankle time. And, and the title went out the window. So now it's ankle time. We rechristened it, and here it is. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, you know, driving over here tonight, I had to remember where to turn because it's been a while. I was thinking, boy, it's been two years since we've been here. But no, scratch that. It's been more than two years. The last time this group played here was December of 2019. Yeah, and wow. So it's just great to be back, you know, sitting here, it all comes back. You got Buzz doing the sound, and uh, Dave Alcorn is here. It's like the old gang. Pretty nice. We really love coming over here. And we plan to do it each and every semester until we drop. <laughs> we will be here. Yeah. So it's just great. And so we have one more tune for you. It's uh, kind of uh, trying to figure the groove. It's kind of a mixed up thing. We so that's a little bit of the Cuban zone is in here and some some other quasi-Latino things, and we even have a little swinging and a, a walking bass and so on through it, so we have fun with it. Um, the title is uh, our, our reaction we often have to uh, reading the newspaper and seeing the political events of the day, and you say, imagine that. Thank you very much for being here. We love this.
Thank you very much. And we'll see you again in the late spring. I forget the date, but we'll be here. You certainly will. And Les, could I ask you to just give, uh, call out everybody's name again? I'm not going to call them the students. I'm going to call them these fantastic musicians. The fantastic musicians, okay. Fantastic musician number one, our trombonist, Greg Shear. Yeah. to welcoming you all back again next spring and of course the, the uh, jazz composers group uh, next spring too and if you feel like going out again tomorrow if it isn't snowing too much please join us for printmaking demonstrations at 11 12 30 and 2 p.m i'd also like to thank audio for the arts and metronome for their wonderful work with us and for live streaming this co these concerts Thank you all for coming out tonight. <laughs>